There are many benefits from infusing ozone through the ears. But in this video, we are primarily trying to verify the possibility of whether ozone gas really can reach the brain through the ear. This application is called an ear insufflation. But first, to understand the possibility that ozone gas can reach the brain through the ear, we must first have a good understanding on the anatomy of the ear and a basic understanding of the blood-brain barrier. So let's start. Here is a posterior view on the positions of the ear and brain. Here is the outer skull. And here is the inner skull. The ear is not directly connected to the brain, it sits below the brain. The bones that separated the ear from the brain are called the temporal bones. We will look further into this as we progress through the video. It is important we first understand what the blood-brain barrier is, and where this brain barrier is situated. The blood-brain barrier is an almost impossible and highly selective semi-permeable border that lines the blood vessels that feed the brain. This barrier is there to protect the brain and central nervous system from invading pathogens. It is very difficult for any pathogen to pass through this barrier. It is important to note red blood cells do not pass across this barrier. However the interesting part is that white blood cells and nutrients do pass this barrier. It is not fully understood how the barrier selectively allows passage of some cells and not others. So, to recap. The blood-brain barrier is located in the blood vessels that feed the brain. So, the brain itself sits in fluid called cerebrospinal fluid, CSF. This fluid is transparent, because, as I mentioned before, no red blood cells cross the blood-brain barrier into this section. The fluid is identified in this picture as the dark layer surrounding the brain. So, if ozone was actually able to reach the brain from the ear, it would permeate into the cerebrospinal fluid around the brain. In this scenario, ozone will bypass the blood-brain barrier. Next, let's take a closer look at the anatomy of the ear. Before we start on the next section, we need to describe a realistic process of what would happen if ozone molecules reached the brain. In reality, if ozone molecules were able to penetrate or perforate into the cerebrospinal fluid, it would not be in the form of ozone molecules. If it was possible to gain entry to the brain, the therapeutic benefits would come from the biological effects of ozone through its secondary messenger responses. Once ozone comes in contact with bodily fluid, it immediately reacts, creating the therapeutic effects thereafter. Ozone will react with biomolecules, creating signal transduction pathways capable of eliciting a multitude of useful biological immune responses. So, it is through these biological responses of reactive oxygen species that induce the therapeutic and stimulating effects of ozone. Think of it like this. The primary mechanism of action of ozone molecules is to activate a multitude of biological responses via chemical reaction with organic fluids. Once the ozone molecules have reacted with biological fluids, there will be no trace of ozone anymore. Here is the anatomy of the ear. This is the tympanic membrane commonly known as the eardrum. The tympanic membrane separates the middle ear cavity from the external ear. Now, in order for ozone molecules to reach the brain, it must first pass through this membrane. We shall revisit this section later and discuss whether this membrane is actually permeable to physiological gases. Here is where the brain is located. And here is the temporal bone. This bone separates the ear from the brain. 
This bone contains tiny pockets of air. These are called mastoid air cells. If the mastoid air cells become infected or inflamed, often as a result of middle ear infections, called otitis media, mastoiditis can develop. Middle ear infections can be very dangerous. Why? Because there are pathways through this bone to the brain. Meningitis is a common middle ear infection that can potentially spread into the brain from the middle ear. The reason it is important for the ozone to permeate through the tympanic membrane into the middle ear is because there are many naturally designed holes in this bone. These holes are called foramens. These openings allow for the passage of the nerves and blood vessels to the brain. One particular hole that carries the facial nerve and acoustic nerves into the brain from the inner ear is located here. This opening to the brain is called the internal acoustic meters. Let's have another look from a different angle. This opening allows passage of the audio signals from the inner cavity of the ear to the brain. Let's take another look from a different perspective. This angle is with the brain removed, so we can better visualize this hole. Again, here is the internal acoustic meters. Here is the spinal cord. This hole is called the foramen magnum. As you can see, there are many other holes. Here again is the foramen magnum, the hole for the spinal cord. Here is the internal acoustic meters. Now, let's go back and revisit a previous section. If ozone molecules were to reach the brain, the most likely point of entry would be through the middle ear. The previous description was just an example, so you can better understand this section. There are two potential entry holes that we will discuss. However, they are not shown on this diagram of the ear. The middle ear has a cavity. And if you look closely, a very thin layer of bone separating the ear from the brain. This thin layer of bone is called the tegment tympani. There are perforating veins that pass through this thin layer of bone to communicate with the superior petrosal sinus in the brain. This blue venous circuit also connects to the back of the eyes and the sinuses. In middle ear infections, the threat of a brain infection is directly related to the tegmen tympani. And the veins that run directly through it, parasites are able to get through this thin layer of bone following the venous lines. Now, you understand why middle ear infections can be so dangerous. The other potential route through to the brain is another hole called the petrotympanic fissure. This hole carries a branch of facial nerves through into the brain. This nerve is called the corda tympani. This nerve runs directly through the middle ear cavity and through the petrotympanic fissure. Here is a better picture for you to view. The nerve runs through the tympanic cavity, middle ear and then through the petrotympanic fissure. Here is the previously discussed tegmen tympani. So, the final part of the video. This whole video may have been a waste of time. Because, if the tympanic membrane is not permeable to gases, there is no possibility ozone molecules will get to the brain. So, all this depends on the eardrum actually being permeable to physiological gases. If you have been on a plane, you'll be familiar with the sensation of your ears popping as you reach altitude. This is because the air inside the middle ear is at a different pressure from the air on the outside of the ear.
so to equalize the pressure by starting to swallow. This action opens the Eusta chain tube. The Eusta chain tube is connected to the back of the throat. And the popping sensation in your ears is this tube opening and closing. Balancing the pressure. It either draws air into the middle ear or pushes it out, creating an equilibrium on both sides of the tympanic membrane. So the tympanic membrane is a very good seal. Let's find out whether gases can pass through it. According to the in vivo measurements of gas exchange across the human tympanic membrane, the conclusion is the human tympanic membrane is permeable to oxygen and other physiological gases. So, based on the anatomy of the air and the scientific studies, the claim that ozone molecules can actually reach the brain through ear insufflations is certainly a plausible hypothesis. Whether the molecules do or do not reach the brain, the benefits from this application speaks for itself. Thank you for watching.